warning. This episode contains strong language. You know, from my point of view, I think you always sell an experience. Um, you know, you're not just selling food in a restaurant. You're not just selling um, beer as a brew pub. You know, if you're a winer, you're not just selling wine. You're selling, you're selling the entire package and the entire experience, you know. So whenever somebody comes in and sits down at your bar or at your table, um, you know, it's a combination of all the things. Um, what we try to focus on is, um, you know, we, we've, as far as an ambiance uh, standpoint, and it's, it's, it's small and it's intimate, and you're literally right there you know, where, I mean, there's days where we open up doors for people to come and have happy hour and we're still finishing up a brew or we're still cleaning up back there. And so it's, it's really kind of engaging experience where they can, you know, they feel like they're right there. In, you know. Welcome to the Lone Star Play podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Play podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. All right. I don't know if I should say that every time. You know, I do struggle with that. Do I just say, hey, it's Patrick? Uh, because then right before this, you hear me say, you know, this is the Lone Star Play. And I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. And then it just cuts to me. So I don't know if you guys get annoyed by that or not. You probably didn't even think about it. And I overthink it. Why? Because I make the show. So I think about all these little things. But you know what? I'm just going to say whatever I feel like when I feel like it. So that's what's going to happen. Um, okay, let's get to the show. This is a great one. Listen, I hope, first of all, let's just say, I hope y'all had a, gr- a wonderful holiday weekend uh, with Thanksgiving. Hope you were able to uh, spend time with your family uh, virtually. Uh, if you got to see them in person, great. I uh, hope you were safe and, you know, um, masked up as much as you could and distance as much as you could. Um, yeah, it was a t- it's a, this is just a, these are tough holidays. Uh, I, I did Zoom. Uh, with my family up in Dallas, um, so that was great, and we'll see what's going to happen for Christmas. We're thinking I'm going to go up there and and you know hang out, so I can see my mom, my brother, my nephews. Uh, but uh, you know we'll see. Again, this this pandemic is uh, still getting the better of us, so you know we'll see what happens. But anyway, I hope you had a good holiday. Um, uh, you know, shopping, even Black Friday. Uh, you know, there, there was stuff over the weekend, that sort of stuff. So I, uh, you know. Either way, I hope you, uh, you know, celebrated and, and had a good time uh, regardless of how you did it. So, all right, let's get to the show. We are in uh, December, all right? Boom. Hello. This year has gone by fast. So, first episode of December, we are going to be talking beer. That's right. I have LBK Brewery on the podcast. So they were just named one of the top 15 brew pubs in the country. They are out of Lubbock, Texas. So this is our first Lubbock, uh, having anybody from Lubbock on the podcast, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Definitely a business just straight up there in downtown Lubbock. So the brew pub is there. Yeah, in downtown Lubbock. And uh, yeah, again, it's getting all this uh, attention, I guess you'd say, popularity um for being one of the top brew pubs um in the country um so uh, it's pretty good we talk about what a brew pub is what does that mean um and we talk about their brewery their beers Uh, we talk about beers making beers how that goes really informative like the barbecue one we did this very informative uh so it's very very cool uh really enjoyed this uh podcast so you know a little bit want to learn a little bit about beer and also, if you're in Lubbock, you can check out this place, the LBK Brewery, um, and you'll soon be able to start getting their beers. You know, you'll be able to go to the store and start buying their beers. And again, they talk a little bit more about that. But so that's coming up. That's going to be exciting. Uh, that interview is just a few minutes away. But before we get to that, we are going to go over, our, as always, our Bet You Didn't Know That segment. So let's get started. Remember, these uh, we are sponsored by Texas Real Food. Um, and they are a website directory where you can go online, put in your zip code and you find all these cool, you know, butchers, farmers markets, like farm to table restaurants, basically any place like that's, you know, farm to table, organic, natural, right? Grocery stores, farm to market, any place like that, it's going to bring it up around you. It's actually very, very cool. It's Google for organic. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Google for organic because it won't bring you anything else up, but those type of places, um, you know, they make the directory, they, 
they get all these places and they put it together it's honestly phenomenal but on top of that they also do uh these cool on their social media they always put up these like fun food facts you know things like that on their social media if you follow them on instagram especially so texas real food on instagram this is where i'm getting this stuff uh and it's just great just like cool little food facts i always love them i thought well we're just gonna start going over on the podcast so okay okay first food fact bet you didn't know dairy cows weigh about 1400 pounds wow (laughs) that's a lot holy cow 1400 pals pals cows that is insane so there you go you just found out (laughs) oh this is crazy all right Ooh, bet you didn't know large groups of pistachios can spontaneously combust. <laughs> I did not know that. So be careful if you're out there, you're buying pistachios. Okay, be careful. You don't buy the big bags. Stick with the little ones. That I wonder why that happens. That is crazy. Just a nut explosion. Just busting a nut. Right, that's a big nut buster. Okay, um, let's see here. Ooh, this is great. Bet you didn't know, in any given day, one in eight Americans will eat pizza. You know, I kind of feel like I did know that, in a way. Not specifically that thing, but if you were to ask me, I mean, a lot of people eat pizza. So, honestly, I might have even guessed a higher number than that but one in eight americans will eat pizza every day every day so okay the next one bet you didn't know watermelon is the most consumed melon in the u.s i love watermelon i mean look we're in the south watermelon is is massive here you know love watermelon um so yeah i believe that it's a delicious um, melon, fruit, right? Who doesn't love watermelon? So there you go, folks. Those are our, bet you didn't know that, Texas Real Food Facts. Hope you enjoyed that. All right, let's move on. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, you know, also the Texas Real Food site. Now, I'm going to show you guys a recipe. So also on the Texas Real Food site, um, slash discover okay so texasrealfood.com slash discover uh you can find all these cool recipes and articles and and things like that uh as well um you know along with the site so there, there's also some features if you will so the one I, I thought i'd point out and you guys could check it out um this is this is great for the season right now and the holidays uh, you can make your own venison jerky without a dehydrator Okay, so check out that article. It just came out on the 25th from uh, Chef Ben. And uh, yeah, you can check that out. So remember, go to texasrealfood.com slash discover. You can learn how to make your own venison jerky without a dehydrator. Again, there's lots of cool how-tos, recipes, all kinds of great articles on there. So uh, anyway, without further ado, let's get to the episode. Um, Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, I missed one thing. Don't forget about our website thelonestarplay.com okay any past episodes questions you know you just want to learn more information about me or the podcast or whatever it's on there so thelonestarplay.com and don't forget to share it tell your friends okay we're doing great guys numbers are going up uh you know people are tuning in we're having a good time let's share the love tell people about it right because then when it is super massive and huge you know, your, your buddy's going to be like, wait, you knew about this the whole time? You didn't tell me? That's fucked up, right? So don't let that happen to you. Tell your friends now. All right, without further ado, again, I said that twice. And I'm not really even sure if I like saying without further ado, right? That sounds, who says that? Who talks like that? Let's just get to the episode, all right? Let's enjoy it. First day of, uh, well, first part of December. We're back after the holidays. Phenomenal episode with LBK Brewery out of Lubbock, one of the top 15 brew pubs in all of the United States. So sit back, enjoy. 
maybe pop open a beer and, and uh, pour yourself a brew and enjoy it along with this podcast. All right. So let's enjoy. All right. LBK Brewery. Have fun. Cheers. I should have said. Very excited. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Yeah. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to this. Uh, to be honest with you, I've just been looking up all y'all stuff. First of all, just real quick, I got to say, I love the can design. So cool. Love it. Thank first you. Thing that, first thing that stuck out to me. Um, y'all, y'all have any ideas of doing anything like on the shelves, any stores locally? I know um, I'm just starting are, so off randomly kind of here. Of, yeah, no, that's actually kind of what we're wrapping up to do right now is uh, we just had a meeting with HEB. They just opened up a store here in Lubbock. And, um, you nice. know, we had a meeting with, yeah, yeah. They tried our beers and they, they loved them and they wanted to uh, extend uh, some shelf space to us. So right now we're kind of in the midst of figuring out logistically how we're going to do that out of our tiny little brewery. Um, <laughs> had to do a bunch of aluminum, which is kind of hard to come by these days sure. and all that fun stuff. Yeah. yeah, no, that's awesome, man. Wow. Congrats. I love HEB. I, I, I'm in Austin. Uh, big yeah. fan of, of HEB. Uh, a couple of my friends have products in them and they're nothing but great to work with, to be honest with you. So that's awesome. Uh, shout out to Pretty Thai brand, Ties and Spices. Uh, okay. Uh, look, guys. Uh, okay. So it's called LBK Brewery, right? That That's the brewery. What What is that broken down? Is that stand for something that I'm missing here? I don't know. Not really. Uh, we, it's, uh, so we go by the brewery LBK. Um, you know, we wanted to, uh, during our kind of initial brainstorming session on, on the name, uh, we had a bunch of names out there that we thought of. And uh, at the end of the day, I think we just wanted to really um, kind of embrace the, the local culture. And uh, we, yeah. we, we like the LBK moniker and things like that. So we just decided it's called the brewery LBK. Bam. Is that, is LBK what they use to shorten Lubbock? I have no idea. I'm, I'm asking. I don't know. Is yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right on. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ATX ahead, ahead. for all. Yeah, like that yeah. Sort of thing. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Totally makes sense. God, that sounds so stupid of me saying that, but I guarantee you, there's one I'm other worried. person listening that was like, "I was thinking the same thing, Patrick." Thank you for Thank asking. You. So, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, we're, real quick, um, why don't you both introduce yourselves and then. You know, we'll just sort of jump into this. Look, real quick, I don't really do interviews. We just have conversations, okay? We're just going to have fun and talk about some stuff and and just be relaxed, okay? So, uh, yeah, I'll let you guys uh, take it from here. You guys introduce yourselves. Yeah, sounds good. So, uh, so yeah, my name is Mike Nim. I am uh, one of the partners here on the brewery. Um, grew up in Fort Worth, Texas. Moved out here to Lubbock in 2002 to go to school. Have uh, kind of been in the restaurant industry and in the service and hospitality industry for my entire life and uh you know kind of joined forces over here and we'll kind of go into the history of of the brewery and how it kind of began i'm, I'm sure in a little bit but uh long story short i had an opportunity to kind of partner up here um on this project and and here we are bam so, yeah and your guest here hey i'm sally taylor i'm the brewer at the brewery how you doing bam okay sally oh so you this is this is the magic brew this is your magic brew here all in the big guns today for sure this is awesome this is what a, this is what we needed right here i love this okay well great guys look uh very much happy to have you guys on the lone star plate uh this you guys are the first brewers we have had a uh, hundred plus episodes so you know this is awesome that's, that's a privilege to do that yeah. you know especially coming from austin where you guys are kind of the one of the craft beer havens in texas uh that you the you know reach out to us that's awesome we appreciate it for sure absolutely i mean to be frank we you know we we just interview all kinds of people you know just that sounds weird too that i haven't interviewed and it just hasn't come up i don't know it just hasn't come up yeah uh we saw the article in texas monthly our team did uh saw the article in texas monthly and our boss sebastian was like bam we got to get these guys on this is an awesome uh story um because you guys were in uh let's see usa today's basically ended up in the top 15 brew pubs uh, in the country, was it the only Texas spot on the list? Is that true? Right? No, there's a couple of Texas spots. I think there was one from Houston. That was from breweries, though. They, they classify yeah. brew pubs and breweries differently or smaller. Yeah. So there yeah. were some awesome breweries that made the brewery list, and we were the mm -hmm. only one, I believe, that made that Texas list, the brew pub list. For the brew pub, right. Yeah. yeah. Bam. Bam. Awesome, guys. Bam. Right here. Right here. Bam. That's what I'm what talking about. Congrats. That's awesome. Yeah. Brew pub and a brewery is much different. 
It is, uh, I guess food, is that really the big difference? What, what do you think? What's the big difference here? The amount of beer you produce. So you're required to have a tasting room and do you have to, you have to serve food, right? Yes. Yes. So mm -hmm. we serve food and, and um, we can only make so many barrels per year as compared to a brewery that can mass produce. Got it. Okay. There we go. See, I didn't, I did not know that. Um, yeah. Cause I've worked, I had a food truck here in Austin for many years and I used to work with a lot of breweries, right? Cause they didn't have food. So we'd pop up with the food truck and serve alongside. And that was a great uh, relationship uh, to be honest with you with a lot of great places. Um, so, but you guys do your own food and have, you know, that, and that's a big part of what y'all do, right? The food aspect to it. Absolutely. And I think one of the, uh, uh, another big component of that too, is that we do have the ability to have a liquor license. And so, uh, you know, nice. instead of just being able to serve a beer here, we can serve wine, cocktails, um, just the full gamut of everything else that we can sell, which, which really opens a, a, it up to a lot of people that can come in and aren't necessarily craft beer fans yet. Right. Uh, they can come sure. in and try different things, uh, pretty much make a full bar out of it. That's awesome. Wow. That is, that, that's definitely a great angle uh, to have for sure. Um, that's definitely something, I, for instance, I don't really drink beer, but I like to go with my friends and we go to the brewery and stuff and I'm stuck always, you know, sipping on a lager for three hours. Uh, and I would like a cocktail, nice whiskey or to get, so that's, yeah, that's really nice to have. Um, you know, I looked up this interesting uh, stat here. Um, this is the retail beer industry only $116 billion. This is based off 2019, I believe. And who knows what 2020 and beyond is going to bring. Right. Uh, but it said craft brewery was craft beers were more than 25% of the market now. And that has grown a lot. So people are definitely right. Gravitating towards, I guess, craft beer, right? Just the craft beer aspect. Obviously, I'm in Austin. It's a much different scene here. It's everywhere. Everywhere is craft beer here. And I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, what, what do you think is the reason people started to gravitate towards, you know, craft beers and not just having whatever, a Bud Light or, or whatever? I don't know. I think that um, just the, the ability to kind of uh, create new and unique flavor profiles out of them. Um, it's kind of one of those new frontiers where, you know, kind of like craft cocktails are kind of blowing up right now across the country. Yeah. Right. Uh, you can do a lot, a lot of cool things. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's craft, it's artisanal. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's made by, by artisans and artists and things like that. And I think that people are really kind of resonating with that sort of thing, especially in the past, you know, decade, decade and a half. And, uh, and that rings pretty true here in like, especially true in Lubbock where, you know, craft beer is, is very much in its infancy. You know, we always have a joke here in Lubbock that, you know, we're always got a couple of years behind, uh, you know, the rest of the state's trends, <laughs> things like that. And so, uh, so, you know, and that, that's why it made an abundance of sense for us to go ahead and, you know, take a shot at this thing, uh, particularly here in Lubbock so, so that we can kind of, you know, help grow the scene and kind of, um, you know, be a big player in the, the beginnings of it. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Sally, what do you think? No, I, I agree with that hundred um, percent. It's a good thing that we have a full bar when we open because, because we're so behind a lot of people come in and they're like, do you got a Michelob Ultra? Do you yeah. have a Bud Light? Mm -hmm. When they see all the tanks, right. And know that we make beer. <laughs> and so it was, it was nice for us to be able to get people transitioned into craft beer here. And now uh, it, what do you think? Maybe the first six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. then people started to realize, Hey, this, you know, that this craft beer thing's pretty, pretty good. And so now we've got regulars that come in we get students that come in uh, we try to do small releases all the time as often as possible. So we get butts through the door, you know, and, and the, the feedback's been really, really good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's great. Um, you know, it's like, uh, supporting a local farm. It's the same, it's the same sort of thing, right? I, 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 I don't see how people don't get more behind it, but I do see how some people are just set on the flavor of X particular beer and right. They just, that's what they drink and they're stuck to it. That's a great way that y'all can transition them. It's really smart. Uh, honestly, you're playing the long game there. Uh, that's great. Um, okay. So we, uh, let's go over a few questions here. Okay. So I asked you guys what, well, I did ask you what a brew pub was, but we did go over the, the differences. Are, are there any differences we're missing here? that you want to that you want to point out about what specifically a brew pub is if people that term sounds very hipsterish too right like <laughs> i think i think one of the main things um is the capacity of how much you are allowed to produce in any given year you know so for a brew pub we're uh, we're kind of relegated to ten thousand barrels a year which yeah. is uh, which is actually i mean that's 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 a big amount for us 
you know, sure. but when you're looking at uh, a, a brewery that wants to do distribution across the state or across the region, you know, or the country even, then, you know, 10,000 barrels, uh, it, it, that, that, is, that goes by really fast. You yeah. know? So we wanted, we wanted to create when we opened up something small and intimate and then kind of grow organically into something bigger. Um, sure. You know, we didn't want to put all of our eggs in the basket and, hey, let's go, let's go build a warehouse and then let's go spend millions of dollars on, yeah. on equipment and, <laughs> and, and, and design and branding and do all those things. Uh, we want to start small and grow into it um, versus, you know, the, the other way around. And, um, you know, it's, it's helped us, you know, slowly grow into it. And, and right now we're, we feel like we're starting to hit a little stride uh, yeah. with, with the good publicity that, we, you know, we got from the USA Today, um, you know, article and, you know, our, our local, uh, you know, Visit Lubbock, our Economic Development Alliance has done a wonderful job. Shout out to them, by the way for uh, kind of helping uh, helping us you know get our name out and put us on the map as well so um, that's important so now so, yeah so now we are you know with this new HEB project and things like that now we're kind of seriously starting to talk about all right so what do we need to do to, to do to expand um you know during during a pandemic uh you know what do we need to do that uh you know how can we grow into it right yeah absolutely no for sure um you know, hundred percent, you know, if you think like from a customer standpoint, okay, let, let's talk about somebody that's like brew pub. I, what does that mean? So let, let's think about it. Not necessarily from a technical standpoint. Okay. How many barrels can you do this? Now, just from a customer standpoint, just like elevator pitch, you know, somebody asking you in line at the grocery store, Oh, you, you own a brew pub. What does that mean? What, what do you, what do you tell them? Well, um, in my mind, say, I, so I'm just thinking about it. And if I say to you, Hey, I want, you want to go to the pub with me? Or do you want to go to a brewery with me? And so the pub has a feel like cheers. You know, you walk in and you remember the TV show Cheers? And it's like, yeah, hey, of Norm, course. And you walk in your name kind of thing. And that's really what we strive for. And it, it is like that in our brew pub. So that's the difference to me. Yeah, nice. yeah you're, you're exactly right. Yeah, you know, um, I think the first brewery I ever went to ever was um, St. Arnold's in Houston. Yeah. And uh, when, when you think about going to a brewery, I mean, that's kind of like an all day thing, right? So you're going to go and there's going to be a million people there. You know, everyone's going on a tour of it, you know, you're going through this big warehouse space, you're gonna go to these big communal tables and you know it's 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 a it's a it's a huge production, it's a huge thing. Whereas I think Sally hit it right on the head. Um this is more of an intimate setting. It's more of a hey let's just run out to the pub really quick. We're gonna the brew pub and yep. grab a couple of beers and take a shot of whiskey and then yeah. Some yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Boom. Then it's like, yeah, now it's familiar. Now it's like, okay, I get it. This isn't that far off. Uh, and we serve. It's just like a term, I guess. People get uh, scared by terms sometimes. It's so it's so strange. Uh, it's marketing, I guess. Um, so what what to you guys? Um, you know, Sally, you may want to answer this first. Um, what what makes a great beer to you? And that may be a broad question, but we'll just see how you take it here. Me personally, in in yeah. what I drink. Whatever you think, well, making the beer. I don't know what 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 makes a good beer to you. If you're, you're going to describe, I don't know what what beer is. Sort of like a beauty pageant. It's subjective, right? It's something that I might love, Mike might hate. Um, you know, same thing. Maybe he likes blondes and I like brunettes or whatever. So uh, it's hard to say what makes a good beer. I think it does it taste good. Does it make you happy? Then that's a great beer, regardless of who made it. Love that yeah. answer. I say that about wine. So yeah, I get it. Totally get it. Um, okay, right on. What What about this thing about bottles and cans? Okay, I went to this. Um, I get might have been a brew pub sort of thing. It was more like a brewery. I, I don't even know what to describe it. But I went to this tour in London where they, you know, talked to us about beer. Basically, what you're talking about. We were in lab coats. I think I had goggles on. You know, it was this whole thing, and it was fantastic. Don't get me wrong. It was great. Uh, I learned a lot. But I remember at the end them talking about cans and bottles and you know, the differences of putting them in and how it does affect the flavor of the beer. And they were talking about cans like the liner inside of them and then also the bottles, depending on what color it is, right? The light that gets let through. I don't know. Can y'all talk about that? Is that did that affect any of y'all's decision on on how y'all do it? Curious. Also, cans are easier, and more convenient. You're not going to bust a bunch of them, you know, if you drop them for us. But also, I think it's better for the beer because it lets no light through and light is bad for beer. So, you know, you've ever had skunky beer, skunky Heineken yes. or something like that. That's yeah. because you can light gets through those bottles. Got it. 
Okay. Yeah, uh, that yeah, totally makes sense. Longevity, uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's, there's different, um, I guess, on between beers and cans with different kind of, I guess, branding opportunities on each one. Um, but then also right now, the, one of the biggest considerations uh, is, is, again, the, the lack of being able to find certain materials, you know, like, so right now, aluminum cans are hard to come by, um, you know, due to a lot of the big guys kind of buying them up uh, in anticipation of there being shortages due to the pandemic yeah. and, and things like that. So, um, you know, how, how viable is it? How, what, what are the, um, you know, cost savings uh, between the two? How available is it to get, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you can- you're out there because Coca-Cola or Coors has bought up all your 12 ounce cans and, you know, you might be forced to go to a bottle. Mm-hmm. So. Sure. And then, yeah. and then, oh, and then oh, oh shit, we just, uh, you know, we bought a canning line, you know, uh, in anticipation before all this happened of being able to like bust out cans, aluminum cans really fast. So now do we need to pivot that and, and you know, is it even in the cards to do bottles, that sort of thing. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. See, these are tough decisions that, you know, consumers don't even think, think about uh from that standpoint you know it's like well i got the you know but there's all these decisions that go into it not necessarily always creative um in fact that's usually like the last it's where you start it's where you want and then right it always ends with just practically what what can we do here you know uh that's that's interesting um and we're smaller we sort of are last in line to get some of those materials because we don't buy in such huge quantities yeah, that totally makes makes sense too. It sort of uh, you know narrows down your avenues uh, for sure. I totally get that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Listen, do you guys think that you know we were talking earlier about you know people gravitating more towards craft beer and getting into it more for sure? Um, do you guys ever seeing it actually just taking over completely and being more the giant and the and the maybe fifty fifty? You know, maybe seeing it being where it's, yeah, it's not such a scary word anymore. Do you see it getting to that path or will it always just stay where it's at? You know, I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, I think it's going to continue to grow. Obviously, you know, there's going to be a little saturation, uh, you know, at some at a certain point in time. But um, I, I think there's there's good longevity to it. I, I think that it's got some legs. It's got some lasting power, you know. Um, there's always going to be people that want beer. There's always going to be people that are going to learn more about it and that are going to kind of enjoy, you know, the, the, the flavor profiles, the, the nuances of it, you know, the complexity of it and things like that, that, you know, that don't, would rather do that instead of drinking a glass of whiskey or, to, or drinking a glass of wine. Um, I think it's going to keep going. I think that's, um, you know, I think that's an infinite, uh, uh, opportunity as, as far as the market goes. It goes bigger yeah. than you want to. You know? Yeah. So, okay. So this is interesting. So let's see if I word this right. So does the craft, you know, title just based off the flavors and how it's made or how much of it is made? So let's say, can a, can a beer be a craft beer if it's, there's millions, it's all over the world in every place? Can that still be considered a craft beer? Or is there a point where it just can't get any bigger, you know? like an Anheuser-Busch craft beer, something to that effect. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, really, we're looking at Sam Adams now, who is still considered craft beer. Because yeah. Because they have big lobbyists. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask that too. Like, you know, people <laughs> taking the title of craft beer. For me, craft beer is the ingredients that go into it. Okay. Um, you know, um, a Budweiser is made with a lot of corn and, and rice and things that are really cheap that goes into that beer. That's why you need to drink it at 30 degrees because it warms up any more than that. It just doesn't taste very good. So yeah, there's a lot of thought put into that. Um, some people go to great lengths, but very expensive things in their beer. And I consider that craft as well. I guess it's just, it's the care that goes into it. No shortcuts, things like that. Okay. So it can, that, and that in my mind makes me think it can still be mass produced and be craft. Well, uh, I think so. Yeah. And Adams as big as they are, I still, I still personally consider them craft beer. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. That, that's definitely interesting. All right. Are there any, are there any, uh, beers out there that are using the craft, you know, moniker that you're like, they're not craft. What are they doing? <laughs> you think so? I, I don't know. Um, I don't think so. I can't think of any instances off the top of my head right now, yeah. but you know, but also in, in my opinion, I think there's a market for everything and for everybody, you know, sure. So, 
um, you know, I don't want to get into semantics of saying, you know, like, don't call it that. Uh, yeah. You know, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There are small ways, though, because while there's big companies that are probably saying they make craft beer, there are small companies making craft beer that's not very good either. So I think that goes both ways. That's it. That's a great point, too. Just because it's craft doesn't mean it's going to be good. Correct. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's a great point, too. Um, yeah, which but at least they're trying. So I'll yep. give them a right. Like, I'll give that. A, I'll rather I'll take that miss over the other miss any day. You know, it's like a good meal, right? You got to you got to like Anthony Bourdain famously said, you got to have the bad meals to get to the good ones. It's just right. that simple. Without the sour, the sweet isn't sweet, right? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. That's absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So, all right. So what do you guys makes a great brew pub, right? Okay. You got a great brew pub, but you're offering the cheers sort of thing, the familiarity. Okay. Is it, you know, is it just a mix of everything? Is it the, 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 the food, the beer, the, this uh, ambience? I don't know. Is there something you lean into more? Is there something you stick to more? Is there, you know, what, what, what would you tell someone else, a friend that came to you and said, I'm going to open up a brew pub. What would you say? Look, these are the things you need to do to be successful. You know, from my point of view, I think you always sell an experience. Um, you know, you're not just selling food in a restaurant. You're not just selling um, beer as a brew pub. You know, if you're a winer, you're not just selling wine. You're selling, you're selling the entire package and the entire experience, you know. So whenever somebody comes in and sits down at your bar or at your table, um, you know, it's a combination of all the things. Um, what we try to focus on is, um, you know, we, we've, as far as an ambiance uh, standpoint, and it's, it's, it's small and it's intimate, and you're literally right there you know, where, I mean, there's days where we open up doors for people to come and have happy hour and we're still finishing up a brew or we're still cleaning up back there. And so it's, it's really kind of engaging experience where they can, you know, they feel like they're right there in it, you know? Yeah. Um, but then beyond that, you know, it's, it's again, kind of that small uh, pub type atmosphere, really intimate, really fun. You get to know all your bartenders, you get to know Sally, um, the brewmaster, you know, you get to talk to everyone that's, that has a, a hand in it. So that's fun. Um, if you don't, do that, then you can still just have a good time and enjoy a really good meal and uh, try a new beer, learn a, learn a thing or two about it and kind of figure out something that's, uh, you know, to have, have a new experience, I guess. So, so that's kind of what I think is uh, kind of our, our strong points um, here in, at our particular brew pub. I know a lot of people, you know, they, they, they work out the strengths of what they have to offer, but from, from our standpoint, um, and also being one of the first uh, places here downtown here in Lubbock, which, you know, downtown's kind of been on the up and up for the past few years. Like they're, they're making some big strides as far as trying to make this more of a destination location, more of a, a, a cool place to be, you know, um, not such a barren landscape of, uh, of nothingness like it's, it has been in the past. <laughs> and so, uh, so I think that people really enjoy that. I think love people here in Lubbock, they've been craving, you know, a destination spot, um, a, a downtown to go to and be able to stay there the entire day and go to this winery and then go to this brew pub and go to this restaurant and spend entire time there. So I think that all kind of is, is, is has been very synergetic to, to our success here and kind of what people expect here from us. Yeah, that's awesome. No, that's, that's right. That's probably, that was a little rambly, but um, no, not at all, not at all. I uh, totally get it. Um, it's a podcast. This is what rambling is for, right? This is like it's perfect. Um, I do it all the time. Uh, Sally, I'm curious. So you you'll work the bar there and serve people beers, right? Is that that's part of your thing too? I will. Yes, I need to. we have bartenders uh, and servers, um, but I. I I, yes, if somebody comes or you'll in, talk to people about yeah, beer and stuff. I absolutely, I'll pour beer, do whatever I can to help out. Yeah, we're we're small enough that we work together as a family. That's awesome. That's awesome. What What are some of like the you know, I don't know, most famous questions you get from people about beer or the I don't know some of the questions you get. I'm curious. Um, we get a lot of questions about how beer is made. A lot of people have no idea how beer is made. They don't even know it's fermented. And so, you know, <laughs> which is, it's fine, you know, it's okay. People don't know. Yeah, yeah of um, course. Part of the road to, you know, learning to like craft beer. So yeah. I do Yesterday, a guy came in and it was really funny. And he looks around and he looks at the menu. He's like, you got any Guinness? 
And I'm like, no, sir, we don't. You know, we, we, we make our own beer. She looks at the menu again and she says, you got a Miller Lite? I'm like, no, sir, I don't. <laughs> But I had to wind up talking him into, you know, we make a Kolsch, which is uh, on the lighter end of the spectrum. And I talked him into one of those. And when he tried it, he's like, oh, this is really good. And then he had, you know, three or four Kolsches. So you just, you have to be patient with people and just know that they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You're there to educate them uh, as well. And, you know, they'll grow on it for sure. Do you ever compare them like, you know, I mean, I guess you knew right away, right? When someone says a particular beer, you know what beer in your arsenal to offer them that's familiar to that. So yeah, of that's style, yes, we do have yeah. a lot of um, hardcore beer nerds that come in. And I think they try to test me sometimes. Have you had this particular beer or this particular beer from some obscure place in Connecticut or something, you know, and I'm like, no, I'm sorry, I haven't. And but some of them, <laughs> <laughs> but they'll, a lot of people will bring me beers. So that started to happen, too, is where I get I get beer gifts a lot because they want me to try something that they enjoy. The gift that keeps that, that in, right? Mm -hmm. That is awesome. That's how you know you're making a difference. The engagement like that, you know, that's really cool. Really, really is very important. Yeah, and and, yeah. and and it does have a really good contingent of very knowledgeable beer drinkers and people that are really passionate about it. You know, there's there's a homebrew club here. Uh, there's a like I said, there's a lot of people that uh, that are really into it. And so, you know, one of the nice. coolest things whenever we did open up, you know, people came in and drove and they were like, "Hey, thank you guys, good job, well done." Um, and now that we're doing, you know, like we're small enough to where we can rotate through different styles all the time. Like we always on a given, on any given day have 10 to 12 taps and, and they're most, there's not a lot of holdovers that we just kind of do as staples. Right. So um, anytime we come up with a new style, we, we get people to come up here and they'll ask some of those questions. Like, Hey, how'd you brew that? What'd you, how'd, how'd you, uh, you know, get that gravity? How'd you achieve this flavor profile? How'd you do this? And how'd you do that? So um, that part's been engaging and fun as well. And, and you know, you'll get challenged. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, we just made a, a quad, a Belgian quad, which was is fourteen and a half percent, and we posted about it while we were making. Holy it. cow! It's yeah, amazing. that's great. And I, had, I had guys from the home group club in come in and challenge me because was, they said there's no way with the system that you have that you could have made that ABV beer. And so I sat down with them and explained everything, and and then explained some stuff they maybe didn't know how to do to to get that ABV to finalize, and then they got all excited. So we were going to come try. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that that is so cool wow that is a heavy beer oh my god one of those and and i'm done uh yeah yeah it'll, it'll knock you out for sure yeah but but for people that are right that that's that's the amazing part you're offering something to pretty much everybody right if you don't know much about beer you can go in still enjoy have a good time if you do know a lot about beer you can go in have a good time uh and and even maybe still learn something uh which is fantastic man but no that's 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 awesome um look guys i was hoping we'd do something fun here um real quick uh i was gonna give you guys some mass-produced beer okay names and then you guys just rate them one to ten here okay i'm just curious what y'all think of yeah these normal beers, you know, and then think of it just as a normal, you know what I mean? From a normal standpoint, uh, just curious what, what y'all is peak beer, you know, connoisseurs, uh, think of these beers. Uh, and again, I'm not really a beer drinker and I'm going to have to take Sam Adams off since you called it a craft. I put it down. I didn't. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Let's start here. Okay. So, uh, and I'll let each of you guys, uh, vote obviously here. Okay. So Bud Light, we'll just start there. That's, popular one oh uh, yeah, that's nostalgic for me I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll we'll we'll go we'll go six what's no but what's our scale yeah it's one to ten right okay one to ten uh, one to ten yeah well no the, the funny thing about bud light is that so so back when i was an undergrad in college you know so my, my group of friends like uh one of, one of my best friends like he was a big Coors light guy and then another one of my best friends was the big Miller Lite guy. And I was a Bud Lite guy. So we always have our arguments as like, which one the better one is, which one's the superior <laughs> light beer and all that. So, so, so I got to give them a shout out. That's a, uh, they're nostalgic. I love, it. I love it. That's awesome. Okay. Gonna... Sally, I'm going to write these down. <laughs> Three. That's a, like a realistic answer, uh, I think. But I get the memory, right? Just like, you can't, you know, I get it. That's why it gets the points. Okay. Uh, all right. Next one. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we'll see the one that I had in high school, and then we'll talk about my nostalgia on that one. Go ahead. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Uh, all right. Heineken. I actually like Heineken. 
Okay, yeah. I don't even mind that it's mm -hmm. sometimes skunky, but I like those weird off flavors. So I'm gonna go six on hiking. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna go six again. Again, uh, one of those nostalgic things. It's, you know, it's not it's not just about the beer itself, but kind of uh, uh, what the circumstances surrounding it. Yeah, it I are, lived you in know? Germany for a little while, yeah. and I drank Heineken, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm all good. I've got uh, so so my background is Vietnamese, and so my parents used to always drink Heineken's warm out of a red plastic solo cup over ice, <laughs> and so that's oh. that's that's how they. <laughs> Heineken, that's, I, and that's what I drinking in Vietnam as well. And so it's, so I remember that was my first experience with beer. And that's, I thought that's how you always drank beer. I love that. That's awesome. Well, that is so cool. Yeah. Hey, six, baby. I love it. Um, that's a great story, by the way. Uh, okay. Uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon here. Ooh, two. Oh, two. Ooh, really? I like wow. I would have never get two. Okay. I like it. okay. I'll, I'll go four. I'll be a little more generous just because again, it's one of those, uh, that's, that's uh, so much an industry beer and, you know, it like, tastes like you know, to me. I don't <laughs> What's wrong with I... it can be delicious. It's not like warm water. <laughs> I love it. That's hilarious. Yeah. I, I drink, it's an industry beer. Yeah. You know, I've been in the restaurant industry for so long. Like I've drank that with a, a shot. You'd, you'd get it at the bar. I was like, but really you're just putting it down as quickly as you can. So yeah, really, honestly, after like two or three of them, then it probably goes up to a six or a seven because you can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. That would be a good scale to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Better after a few beers, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, okay. Uh, Shiner, Shiner Bach, Texas favorite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> five. I'm going to agree on the five. We'll go five. I'm going to go five. Yeah. That's fair. Right yeah. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, okay, this I used to. Oh my god, I used to drink this beer in the uh, by the thirty packs, and we would play King's Cup back in my early twenties. I'm forty one. This is a, oh my god, twenty years ago. Play King's Cup all night. Keystone, Keystone Light specifically. The light of Keystone. Yeah, there's a. <laughs> that's true. Keystone Light. I should say. I don't think it tastes like anything. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's not offensive. It's like corn, at all. corn water light. Uh, it isn't offensive. And I'll go with a three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Okay. Two, three. Two, two, two. Two. Okay. Going with two. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's like nothing. It's, it's literally, that's why we drag it. And it's cheap. Um, cost is a factor. Uh, okay. So Corona, this is very popular beer, but has always sort of had that fame of like not being a good beer. You know, I actually prefer Pacificos if we're going for Mexican beers, but I can drink a Corona. I'm, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go six on the Corona. OK. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go four. Right. On. I don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I only really drink, uh, you know, like Mexican lagers and uh, you know, things like that when I'm having fajitas and tacos and things like that. So, yeah, uh, but it, but it's but it's a nice compliment to that. So. You know, it's not offensive, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just a not just an easy beer on the beach. Uh, oh. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Paci Pacifico, mm -hmm. good good shout out Pacifico uh, for sure. La Bohemia is one of my favorite uh, Mexican beers. Um, okay, uh, Blue Moon. What do y'all think of Blue Moon? If I'm going to a restaurant that only has Bud Lights and Budweisers and Millers. There's always, for some reason, that blue moon because I feel like that's for yeah. the craft. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so five, six. Uh, no, I, I totally agree. I, I <laughs> six point five. Oh, six point six. Oh. Woo! Uh, I know. No, yeah. You know, I think uh, I, I kind of respect what they did. You know, blue moon is kind of one of those kind of uh, uh, transition bridge beers for people that don't really want to get into craft beer yet, or they don't know they want it. Uh, but they also kind of uh, one of their big marketing branding things was like they're one of the first ones to kind of introduce that um, orange, orange slice, yeah, orange slice into it, um, which a makes it um, imminently more accessible to people that are like I, I don't know if I want that or not. Um, you look all fancy when you drink it. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's not a bad idea because they, if they want to bring out those orange notes in their beer and you know kind of in that profile, then it helps that out a lot. So I, I kind of respect what they did with that. They were kind of one of the first ones to do that. So sure. Yeah. 
Hey, I like adding a lime to my beer, right? There's nothing wrong with adding some fruit uh, to the beer uh, sometimes. Look, I'm a shandy drinker, to be honest with you, um, all the way. Uh, okay, Coors. What do y'all think of Coors? Light? Should we do Coors Light or Coors? Do I people drink like Coors? I like the bangle one that comes in the barrels. Yeah, yeah the yellow belly. Yeah, I'm going to go seven. Ooh. Se wow. Yeah, on the barrels. Yeah. It's got to be in the little barrel bottles, though. I know what you're saying. Okay, fair enough. So, so same. It'll be the beer bot for you too. So we'll do the same beer there. What do you think? Yeah, it'll, we'll give us five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a beer pageant. It's so Ob obviously has no memory of drinking that in a red solo cup over <laughs> ice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll give I a couple. It. I'm talking about beer that has the big <laughs> taste of corn, but I can do that one. I guess. Yeah. So. I like it. I love it. I love these. Okay. Uh, Michelob. This is a popular one, right? Michelob. Yeah, I'm going to go two again on that, too. Not yeah. Yeah, well, you're going to go low three, three and a half. I like it. So much I like it. Uh, no, I am. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> we, I, I, we can't just shame on every single beer, you know, because... <laughs> hey, except know. when it came to Coors, he was like five. He was just like... <laughs> yeah. <you know. laughs> You know, he's like, forget, forget Gores. Uh, all right, Michelob. That's kind of fair, though. I think that's fair. Uh, what about, okay, we'll end. This is the last one here. Uh, we'll do Miller Lite. That's it. It's like, it's an inoffensive four. Yeah. yeah. Four. For, uh, what did I rate Bud Light earlier? I don't remember. Oh, six. I got to go lower than that because, again, all the smack talk with my buddies. So, uh, so we'll give it a four. Yeah. Four. Okay, I'll fair enough. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right. You didn't mention one, and and so I'm gonna have to bring it up because it was bring the first it up. back in high school. And just recently, I had a dinner party, and I had mentioned it to this friend like a while, a while back when I drank. So he brought me one, and it was a Mickey's Big Mouth. You know, they come in like the big 40s, the green bottle. Have you ever seen those? I, I know. I mean, I know 40s, but I don't think I've seen Mickey. Maybe I have. I don't know. I, I don't know. You're, you're gonna look for it now. The next time you go. Yeah, store. that's true. That's true. That was my the first thing I got in high school, and so I got I got to give that a solid five. Right on. So I tried recently, <laughs> and I thought it was going to be awful, and it really wasn't that bad. It was, it was okay. It was That's bad. a big bottle, right? So just a lot to balance. It's just there's a lot going on there. I think there's a picture of me drinking it. I'll send that to you, but they they got a picture of me, me tasting it. <laughs> tasting it, yeah, I like that. Tasting it, mm -hmm. just you know, downing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So let's see here. Uh, the highest score. Well, six, six was the highest score um, that you gave, Mike. And then seven, Sally, you gave to Coors. Seven is the highest score. So Coors really won here, won, won out uh, over everything. Uh, and then Bud Light was just really tied there in Blue Moon and Heineken. Those were your favorites there. So very interesting. Very. I love this. Love this. Yeah, I like that. So what, how would y'all rate y'all's, uh, th that's tough to rate y'all's beers, you know, craft beers and that sort of thing. Um, do people ever come in and sort of, I mean, I hate to say it. Do people come in and like, nah, nah, this isn't a good beer guys. You know, <laughs> y'all should oh, really, um, untapped. We have a, we, most of our beers have pretty good ratings on untapped, but once in a while you get that one star where people are like, this just sucks. I mean, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's better, right? to be to have that honesty from them and you know you know the not yeah, no, it, it's no big deal look you're never going to make everybody happy and again it's a beauty pageant so you know what however you feel about beers it's okay i don't ever get offended mm -hmm. by anything like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah for sure for sure and, and and yeah different the strokes for different folks i guess um so you know not everyone's going to love something that we love you know we, we we were big into like kind of big abv big chewy you know belgians and stouts and things like that um which aren't always appropriate for any given season and for any given person so it's, it's, it all depends you know but yeah we have been so un untapped is uh not, are, are you on untapped or you, i'm sure you're familiar with the untapped i don't know what that is it, so it's like a it's like a social media platform for people that want to just uh they can check in any beer that they try and rate it and then so it's kind of a it, it creates kind of a, an inventory of all the beers you've tried and it lets oh. group clubs got to keep track of kind of what the ratings are and what the general, uh, you know, temperature is of any given style um, among the public. So yeah, it's that's like cool. Yelp for beer, but not 
like Yelp, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So, not, so, so, na- not nasty not like Yelp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Not as obnoxious with the advertising calls and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, that, that is really cool. Um, all right. Look, is there anything that we um, that we didn't cover that you guys wanted to say that I didn't mention? I don't know. Anything you want to tell our listeners? I mean, I, I, we'll, we'll get to like, you know, your website, your social media and all that stuff. How do people uh, to stay connected with you? But uh, anything? I don't know. Anything we didn't cover? I mean, I, I really think just uh, and this is kind of one of those situational things. Again, this is like the third time I brought up, uh, you know, the pandemic, but it's, it's kind of have to because it's on, you know, the forefront of everyone's minds and things like that. But uh, really more of a, just a shout out to everyone for supporting us. You know, this is one of those times and, and you know, and, and, and obviously it's, um, you know, a good time to drink uh, heavily. <laughs> and so it makes it a little easier to support the little guy the group club and things like that. But, uh, but, you know, it's, uh, that's what keeps us afloat and keeps us alive, you know? So, so shout out to everyone that's uh, supported us. Agreed. For sure. Agreed. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Um, well, okay. Well tell everyone how they can connect with you guys online and any other ways that you want them to connect with you local and not local. So th- this goes out, you know, obviously everyone. Yeah. Um, uh, first things first, uh, locally, uh, connect with us by coming in and having a beer and talking to us and, and hanging out, having a good time. Um, socially distance, of course, and, you know, keeping all that. But uh, beyond that, then we're on Instagram, the brewery LBK. Um, we're on Twitter at the brewery LBK. Our website is the brewery LBK.com, Facebook. And uh, is, that, is that it? I think that's it. Thank you. Cool. All the and, and untaps if you want to just uh, demolish our sports. If you want to, you want to give us a one star and tell us we suck. <laughs> untap. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that guys five stars all the way well, i don't know how many stars they give six give them six um okay anything i don't know anything uh websites uh do you guys do any like classes or anything like that that people should know about we're not organized enough for that yet yeah no right? yeah <laughs> Not not we, th- not there just yet. We talk but. about it. These are things that we discuss, but and I think all that was pre-COVID, you know. And so um, mm-hmm. that's uh, true. Good I call. I would love eventually to be able to do like a brew class or or do a brew day where people you know come and, and join in something like that. Um, two years ago, we did a, a special brew for International Women's Day, and we partnered with a craft beer bar here in town, and all the women that work there came and helped us brew a special beer that we then sold together. So that was nice. I would like to. That's awesome. To- Hell yeah. That's awesome. I love that idea. That's oh, super cool. Yeah. Oh. And just keep up with our social media. Well, we always kind of do try to do offbeat things. Um, you know, one of the, one of the things I think uh, people really enjoy is we do a thing called small batch Saturdays. So every Saturday we release about a half barrel barrel of something funky and Somewhere. fun and yeah. something weird and unique and um, just offbeat. And so that's a good time for people to connect with us and come in and try something new and, come hang out and um, kind of figure out how we did it, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Wow, that's great. Um, okay, guys, well, you heard it there. Um, so check them out online. That's awesome. Look, I just want to t- tell you guys, thank you uh, so much. This was such a great conversation. Uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, are you guys opening here pretty soon? Got some service to get to or how's the day? Uh, we do here in just about a couple of hours. Yeah, so we're going to uh, kind of clean up and um, do some admin stuff and knock out what we can before that. But, but no, we, we really appreciate your time as well. And thanks for the yeah, opportunity thank you to, very much. to come on. We had a great time. Good absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, wish you guys uh, all the best during service. And um, again, thank you guys so much for your time. And uh, we'll send an email out uh, when this episode goes out, probably be a couple weeks. That's usually the, the, you know, the buffer that we have in between these recordings. So, uh, but again, thank you guys so much for your time. Enjoy service. My best to you guys all out there. Take care. Thank you. Likewise. Take care. Bye, guys. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time.